Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Griffin here and I hope you're all having a great day as always. Now, we are in the last month of the 2021 calendar year and I don't know about you guys, but this year has just flown by for me. So much has happened, but it isn't over yet. So let's now speak about a couple of stocks to watch in the month of December and beyond. And by the way, as with every one of these monthly stock to watch videos, these are companies that I'm looking at for various different reasons and that I currently have on my watch list or that I'm looking at purchasing maybe more shares of, but they aren't necessarily stocks to buy for every investor. Make sure to look at what I'm speaking about, do your own research, and then make a decision. So that goes with every one of these monthly stock to watch videos. Also, most of the stocks we're going to be looking at today are down hard from their all time high. So that's one of the main reasons why I've taken a closer look at some of these companies and considering whether or not they could represent nice opportunities for growth in 2022 and beyond. With that said, let's get right into it. And as always, these videos take a lot of time to put together. So if you enjoy them at any point, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel, hit that bell button to be notified of new and upcoming content. All right, so the first talk we're gonna be speaking about in today's video is DocuSign, ticker symbol Docu on the NASDAQ, which currently trades for right around $135 per share at the time of filming this, and that is down around 57% from its all-time high that it actually hit back in September of this year after getting completely destroyed on Friday's trading after posting their Q3 earnings Thursday after market close. Now, DocuSign was very much one of these stocks that got caught up in the momentum experienced at the height of the pandemic as it's a leading digital signature provider. And even if we do continue seeing these restrictions being lifted in terms of lockdown periods, hopefully we won't see that again. Well, there's only going to be an increasing need for at a distance signatures from here on out. Personally, I rarely use these types of at a distance signature providers before the pandemic. And now I pretty much use them on a weekly basis to do various different deals real estate, as well as other ventures. By the way, I've had DocuSign on my watch list for a couple of months now since around September. And at the current price point, after having jumped off a cliff here, I think this could be a nice entry point for a longer term hold. Taking a look at the company's financials, despite the massive sell-off, we're actually still seeing fantastic growth quarter over quarter. The company posted revenues of $545.5 million, which was still up 42% year over year, and earnings per share were up 100 and 63% from 58 cents to 22 cents last year. Both of these financial growth figures are actually fantastic and even crushed analyst growth expectations. So this is usually reason for a stock to actually perform in the market rather than sell off the way it did. Well, it turns out it's the company's financial outlook for the fourth quarter where revenue guidance is set at around a midpoint of 560 million, which would represent year over year growth of roughly 29%, which is below analyst analyst estimates of 573 million. That's one thing about the stock market that sometimes just doesn't make sense, especially when it comes to analyst estimates that come into play for a stock's price movements, where we're seeing a company, for example, DocuSign, that's expected to grow by 40%, 30%, sorry, uh, in Q4 2021 over Q4 2020. That is fantastic by any comparison. However, just because it's expected to uh, slow down from you know monumental growth that we experienced in the pandemic, of course, this type of company is going to see a cool off, but 30% growth is still fantastic for any company. So just because the top line growth estimates at 30% over the next quarter, which is still fantastic, ends up falling short in the short term from analyst estimates, the stock jumps off a cliff at 40% down in one single trading day. That's just crazy to me. What also seems to have investors on edge though is the CEO Dan Springer stating that weakening demand for the product was particularly disappointing after exceptionally high growth rates at scale. DocuSign has delivered since the beginning of the pandemic. He continues on to say that after six quarters of accelerated growth, they saw customers return to more normalized buying patterns. The way I see things considering their financial growth over this past quarter, which I think were actually pretty good, is that it's those statements from the CEO that kind of spooked investors for what might be to come in 2022 for DocuSign. That being said though, the very next day that shares dropped by more than 40%, the CEO himself said that he would be likely buying $5 million worth of more DocuSign stock because he was not expecting this type of market reaction to the financials reported in the quarter as well as his own statements. So although the stock is still not yet profitable, we're seeing aggressive growth estimates for top line doubling by the end of 2022 and profitability to be achieved by the end of next year with earnings 
earnings growth projections over 100% per year and nice free cash flow figures now and moving forward. So overall, DocuSign has over a million paying customers at this point and their rate of growth is quite impressive, all of which leading me to believe that at the depressed price point right now for their stock could represent a nice buying in opportunity for some appreciation over the course of 2022, especially considering the fact that they are striving towards profitability. This is in addition to the fact that the company is also looking to further diversify into other business verticals, which they have been doing over the past year or so, making it even more favorable for a longer term hold as they're looking for different business verticals and income sources. For instance, the company's DocuSign Insight platform leverages artificial intelligence to read and analyze legal contracts to identify troubling clauses or even beneficial ones. Of course though, after any stock dumps down by over 40% in one single trading period, it's important to stay vigilant as we could definitely continue to see volatility in the shorter term for DocuSign, but based on the company's growth, I don't think this type of sell-off was warranted and it'll probably be a temporary hurdle in the bigger picture, representing a nice entry point for longer term investors. All right, moving into the second stock for today's video. This is a company that I do currently hold in my portfolio, have for a little while, and it is just bleeding so hard over the past couple of weeks at a pace that I don't necessarily think is warranted considering the company's underlying business as well as financial growth. The company is PayPal, ticker symbol PYPL. PayPal stock is currently trading for around $185 per share, down around 40% from its all-time highs, which sure, a correction could have been warranted, but this is a monumental sell-off that I do not believe is warranted. But as a longer-term play on the growth of the company and their stock anyways, I think this is an opportunity that I am not going to pass up, and you should definitely consider taking a look at PayPal further. Now, if you've been following my channel or buy pretty much anything over the internet, most likely you're familiar with PayPal. They're a global leading fintech company that basically just facilitate online transactions and payments for goods over the internet. And this is a company that's been growing tremendously, both from a business and financial standpoint over the past couple of years, to the point where now they have a user base of over 400 million accounts, active accounts that is, as of Q2 of this year. They also own Venmo, which is becoming increasingly popular in the United States, as well as the Honey app that scours the internet for coupon codes. Do you have Honey installed? What's Honey? Oh, no, no, no. The main reason why I'm so bullish on PayPal and their stock though is because of the growth of e-commerce that was just accelerated over the course of the pandemic. And from here on out, based on the data, this is just a reality that we are going to be faced with. So PayPal is undoubtedly going to be one of these companies that's going to benefit firsthand from the increased gross trend transaction volume over the internet. Now, a couple of things that could have contributed to PayPal stock selling off so much. More recently in recent news, PayPal used to be the sole payments provider for eBay. That's pretty much how they got their debut back in the early 2000s. And recently, eBay has transitioned away from using PayPal as their payments provider. But in the big picture, this only accounted for around 3% of PayPal's gross sales anyways in Q3 of this year. And as for payment volume flowing through PayPal, it was up 26% to $310 billion in the third quarter of this year, which brings PayPal's trailing 12-month volume to $1.2 trillion in payments processed, which is significant. And again, I believe this will do nothing but continue to grow over the coming years. In addition to this, despite PayPal and eBay parting ways, well, as of 2022, it's been said that Venmo is going to be partnering with Amazon, where as of right now, you cannot check out on Amazon, which by the way, again, is the world's largest online retailer. You cannot check out using PayPal exclusively. So having Venmo, which is owned by PayPal, coming into play here and being a form of accepted payment on Amazon is going to be a huge win for PayPal as a whole. So then if there's so much growth right now from a business and financial standpoint for PayPal, why is the stock selling off so significantly? Well, after the roughly 230% gains following March 2020 lows, the stock reached its high in July, but then has simply tumbled down continuously. In October, PayPal was rumored to also be buying Pinterest, sending share prices tumbling 10% in late October. And PayPal's stock price has not been able to recover even after it released an official statement noting that it was not going to be pursuing this acquisition. 
To me, it kind of just seems like the market has abandoned PayPal stock, but kind of for all the wrong reasons. With the stock price dropping so significantly over the past couple of months, this has brought their price to earnings ratio significantly lower, down to levels that we were seeing in early 2020, even end of 2019. And with fourth quarter guidance between 12 and 14% increases for top line, as well as a 33% increase in gross transaction volume, I still think that PayPal is a strong growth stock. Nothing in their financials would suggest the stock being down nearly 40% at this point. Finally, PayPal stock has average analyst price targets of $276 per share, representing upside of just under 50%. By the way, we're around midway through today's video. If you're enjoying it, make sure to smash the like button and also check out the links down below where you can get some free money for opening up accounts. For example, opening up a Wellsimple trade account, you can get $25 completely for free signing up using the link down below. And you can also get some free money for signing up and opening a couple other accounts like savings accounts and so forth. And while you're down there, make sure to check out the link to my full stock market investing course where you'll get everything you need to know to properly navigate the stock market and create a portfolio suitable for your needs as an investor for the long-term growth of your portfolio's value and wealth. All right, moving into the third stock to watch in December that is down hard, and I just had to include it in today's video because so many people have been asking me, and the stock is down tremendously from its all-time high. This is Lightspeed, ticker symbol LSPD, both on the Toronto Stock Exchange as well as the NYSE. And this is a stock that at current price points could represent nice growth opportunity over the course of next year and beyond. So first of all, taking a look at the stock chart here in the Canadian market, we can see that it has jumped just off a cliff from its all-time highs of around $165 per share to now in the lower $60 range. And this represents a sell-off of right around 60 to 61 percent, which is absolutely insane, but is primarily due to the fact that there was a negative short sellers report and now currently a class action lawsuit against the company on the basis that the company had misrepresented certain acquisitions as well as boosted the numbers pre-IPO. Now, I had sold off a portion of my Lightspeed stock around the $140 per share range, which I've mentioned in multiple previous videos on the channel. And I did also mention more recently though that I was not going to be adding any more shares to my Lightspeed position in the short term while we're seeing how this plays out regarding the lawsuit right now, which inherently will come with significant levels of volatility. In fact, since mentioning that in a recent video, the stock has continued selling off by another roughly 26%, which isn't something that I'm entirely surprised by. Considering all of these headwinds right now, Lightspeed stock seems to be trying to find a bottom, but the stock just keeps tumbling down even further. And buying in before concrete signs of business footing and stock reversal is basically like trying to catch a falling knife at this point. On paper though, the company's top line growth does seem extremely impressive, especially with the tie-ins towards e-commerce right now, and also considering the fact that considering current price points, analyst estimates of around $120 per share represents almost a double upside. The company's most recently reported quarter posted top line figures of 133 million up from only 45 million one year prior. Subscription based revenue was up 132% and transaction based revenue was up 320%. Other than the whole lawsuit situation though, what seems to have investors on edge for Lightspeed is their massive net losses at just under 60 million for the quarter, which is roughly triple that of last year's quarter. And they are not expected to become profitable over the coming years. So ultimately, the way I'm seeing this is that I tend to believe the market is reacting quite harshly to these allegations towards Lightspeed, even though they are quite serious. But considering the fact that this is still a company that is growing massively from a financial standpoint, and considering the depressed price point that we're seeing right now for LSPD stock, I'm definitely keeping a close eye on any type of bottom price point and reversal for Lightspeed, which is a company that I'm still holding in my portfolio for now, as in the short term, we're bound to still see a lot of volatility for Lightspeed, but long term, this could be a nice entry point for some substantial gains over the coming years. On a separate note, Lightspeed is often compared to Shopify, even though they do have quite a distinct business model. Shopify is also a leading Canadian e-commerce platform, and they are both companies that are going to continue benefiting from the growth of the e-commerce industry over the coming years. And Shopify is a company that I also hold in a couple of my portfolios. The ticker symbol for Shopify 
Shopify is shop both on the TSX and the NYSE, and Shopify is a leading merchant platform that provides a range of e-commerce related subscriptions and payment gateways. That's important to the global economy really has grown tremendously alongside the secular growth catalysts towards e-commerce. So again, I don't think we're going to be seeing any signs of slowdown for the growth of e-commerce in the coming years. And both Shopify and Lightspeed are two companies that are going to be benefiting tremendously from this trend. Shopify has already been a winning stock for my portfolio and over the coming months I'm looking to add more to this position. All right moving on to the fourth and next stock that I've been keeping an eye on for quite some time now but I've never actually pulled the trigger until this week. We have Celsius Holdings ticker symbol CELH on the Nasdaq. Now Celsius Holdings is a company that develops markets and distributes fitness beverages across the US and internationally that's really gaining a lot of momentum in the space which has been reflected over on into their financials as well as well their stock growth. In fact, taking a look at their stock chart, year to date, the stock is still up roughly 35%, and this is following now a 37% drop in share price from their all time highs of around $110 per share. Celsius Holdings has a market cap right now of around 5.2 billion with a trailing 12 month PE of 643X, which is insane, but their forward PE based on company guidance is around 232X. So the company is expecting to increase their bottom line over the coming 12 months. What's really the most exciting about this company though is the speed at which they are growing their financials with trailing 12 month revenues of 245 million up 88% over the 2020 full year. And although profitability remains low for now, we're looking at continued aggressive revenue growth through to 2024 and net income is expected to pick up by roughly 50% per year over this same period. Celsius Holdings is definitely a pure growth play though with a low profitability right Right now. However, considering the depressed price point that we're seeing, I think at an entry point right now, writing the company's growth in actual business growth, but then also their financial growth over the coming years could represent some very nice upside. Finally, analysts have an average price point target of $113 per share, representing around 66% upside from the price point right now. All right, moving on into the next position for today's video. This is actually an exchange traded fund rather than a stock here. And I think it's important moving into the 2022 calendar year where we're expected to see interest rates climb to also maintain some exposure in our portfolios to either fixed income instruments or some stocks that have that higher income potential. So we're speaking here about the Invesco preferred ETF, ticker symbol PGX, which is quite a bit different uh, than any of the other ETFs we usually cover on the channel. And this fund holds preferred shares of the underlying securities that it holds. Unlike an exchange share fund that holds regular shares, this ETF holds preferred shares, making them more of a fixed income instrument where the dividend distributions are on a fixed and set schedule. So in this case, the PGX ETF invests in preferred shares of companies like Citigroup, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, and so forth, as we can see from the top underlying holdings. And for this reason, you can kind of think of this fund as being more similar to a fixed income instrument where the distributions will be on that fixed schedule but usually this will come with a trade-off to capital gains. At the time of filming this video, the ETF trades for around $14.75 a share and has a dividend yield that is a little bit more on the higher side, especially considering that guaranteed fixed schedule of 4.87% net of the 0.52% management fee. So the dividend distributions are also on a monthly schedule for this fund. And remember how I said the preferred shares usually have a higher yield, but the trade-off is less capital movement. Well, if we look at this ETF's chart over the the past five years, we can see that the actual investment itself has only fluctuated slightly. So since we're in the month of December now moving into the new year where we're expected to see interest rates start rising and typically this has a negative impact on equities and the stock market, having some exposure to preferred shares for that more consistent income could be something worth looking into further. And then finally, the last position for today's video is once again, an exchange traded fund. And this might sound boring, but I always consistently buy into an S&P 500 fund every single month. On the Canadian side, it's usually VFV. And on the American side, in my American positions or portfolios, I should say, it is VOO, also offered by Vanguard. 
It's always fun to analyze certain growth stocks and opportunities that seem like they can potentially provide higher returns than the overall market, as we just looked at in today's video. But I also always recommend consistently buying into these broad index funds like the S&P 500. And most of my portfolio up to usually 40-50% is going to be comprised of a handful of these passively managed and low fee index funds like an S&P 500 fund. So that's always something that I recommend buying into, especially at a time right now uh, where we're seeing high valuations in the market and somewhat uncertainty moving into the new year. Even if the S&P 500 drops significantly over the course of the coming months, just consistently buying into this over the next 5, 10, 20 years is sure to be one of the best financial decisions you can make for the overall growth of your portfolio with little to no effort whatsoever. So that about wraps up today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to comment down below which stocks are currently on your radar and what you've been including in your portfolio. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do make sure to smash the like button and also subscribe to the channel we're trying to get to at least 90k by the end of the year i was trying to get to 100k this year it doesn't look like it's going to happen but if we can get to at least 90k that would be absolutely fantastic so thanks a lot for watching today's video and i hope to see you in the next one